you very much. And I must thank the translators. Uh, without the translators, I could be sitting, standing here, reading to you. I don't understand Hebrew. I myself come from a Jewish background. Three quarters of a family disappeared during the war. Um, so in that sense, um, we hold certain things in common. Yesterday, one of the novelists, Judy Wilde, it's very interesting um, what was just said. Um, when she was very scared, she said, what her mother I asked her to do was to imagine her mind split in two pieces, yes, like that, and to walk down the middle and walk out of this scary room and find a room on the other side. I want to just say a few words about poetry, because poetry is what you're hearing. Poetry is what uh, Mayer wrote. Um, and why poetry? And I'll read you just a few verses from the 16 verses, and, and I'll tell you why I chose those as well. Talk about naming. I think poetry is, in effect, a kind of naming. It is one of the differences between it and the story. Um, the Hungarian poet Agnes Nemesnagy wrote somewhere that the poet is a scientist of the emotions who names the emotions. The poem is, in effect, the name of that emotion. The poet, in that respect, is not a story. In fact, the more the poem is a story, the less it is a poem. Um, you can talk about it in many other sort of ways. I always think of it as a kind of form of physicality, as if the mouth is like for a kind of microcosm of the whole body, that the whole thing feeds itself through it. And the experience of poetry is a physical experience in that sense. Um, Kieran quoted that particular verse um, from Who Is Like You. I just want to come back to that. Um, he said, forced away from where we dwelt, we go like cattle to the slaughter. A slayer stands above us all, we burn and die. And what that makes me think of, actually, um, is it Paul Salam, uh, the famous death fugue of Paul Salam, which, begin, which has this line, black milk at daybreak, we drink you at night, we drink you at midday, death is a master from Germany, etc. The same subject, the same voice, the same cry. My one last little bit about poetry, if you like. One of the major differences, as I see it, is between the functions, if you like, of poem and um, story. Imagine this, in terms of naming. A strange creature appears before you, out of the, in, out of the forest, into the clearing. Your first reaction is, <gasps> that is poetry. <laughs> that first cry, that first, and then you give it a name. Yuck, blue, tiger, whatever you like, okay? That thing, and everything that goes with it, is what poetry is. To me, the story is, what happens next? You see the creature, now what do you do? So, it's about states and conditions, rather than about consequences. And that's why I'd like to read um, from the 16 poems. Um, the liturgical poem is fascinating. The liturgy has its own kind of form, its own sort of dictate. It's a public form, it's a ritual form. Um, but these poems, the 16 poems, are lyrical poems. Uh, they free, they, they, they um, respond to uh, scriptural precedent, but they're not quite so bound by it. Um, they're not quite so bound by the formalities of liturgy. And I think here, Mayer's metaphors are a kind of ease and brilliance that is founded actually on hope and delight, which is another side of life after all. And it is what makes tragedy so much more a tragedy, because we understand hope and delight. I was going to introduce it to you, lots of little bits of that, but I won't do that. Um, all I'll do is I'll read you some passages, and I'd like you to listen now for the metaphors that are at play for what the metaphors evoke, um, for what kind of world they call out to. So actually just little bits and pieces, and again my thanks and congratulations to the translators. Um, so this is from part two. A fire with longing for the rains of love, here I am thirsty in my inner heart, with dewdrops of desire the folk are fed, I too perhaps will sip a lover's cup. My true love threatens, 
Faith shrivels in drought, withers like reeds from want of water. O oh, sprinkle it upon healing balm, that impure man may be made clean. There are dewdrops of desire, there's a lover's cup, there are reeds. These things appear and they bring themselves in front of you. This is number three. Who will give my people limpid wine? For in my vineyard there is no such wine. The waters of my wells are like a pit. From my sea no clear liquid can be drawn. Seek your abundance, children of my people, from those who dwell in curtained tents of love, from those who come out to draw from his springs, for I shall drink from those springs ceaselessly. Springs, wells. Number four, the image of my love strikes me with awe. His glorious rays imprison me in splendor, sparkling and falling like an arrow shower, stinging my eyes, causing me bitter smart. If I should flee, where would I find relief from arrows that can wound the heart of truth? Better to gaze upon visions of my love in quiet and peace, turning bitter into sweet. From number six, I just need the second part of number six because I think this goes to the heart of it. The second verse of this goes like this. I shall weave a garment of songs worth their weight in gold, a unique garment, entire and incomparable. I shall store it in a white house that I shall build, a palace furnished with courtyards and galleries, palaces, courtyards, galleries, garments. I want to give you a sense, of, you know, I can't read Hebrew, I cannot judge of the preciseness of what you're losing. This is what you've got. And this is what I'd like to draw your attention to. Number nine, the Lord will dig a hollow in my heart and water it from channels of my tears. He'll make my groans to sound like a sea wind. I gasp with inner pain that racks my loins. As if my ship lacks decking, he hews off my inner feelings to serve as shipboards. His mighty power sets the sea on fire, or rather lights it with a heavenly flame. It's a whole damn ship, you know? He conjures for you the ship. He makes you see the ship. He is freed in his imagery by the ship. Just a couple more. Number 10. Love longs for our affections and feasts on mine. My heart is pierced with arrows from his quiver. I am a storehouse filled with pains. They are the hosts commanded by my Lord. The wounded groan and cry out to my love, for he can both restore them and protect. Like a lion he tears us apart, but our tears he weaves into a shield. Tears as shields, as a protection from lions. And I'll just read this last little part from the very end, number 16. Addressed to the beloved, which may remind you of the Song of Solomon, which may remind you of other addresses um, to the divine in terms of love, in terms of human love. With words I shall arouse you, my beloved, to make yourself a prince of high esteem. Accept my coronal of joyful songs and dwell within the palace of their beauty. Let glory grow within the weary heart and purify me in your rainbow light. Take pleasure in my precious meditations, these songs of exaltation and of awe.